the highlight was seeing the results for the February special. What was your return on ad spend? 2,200% or something. 2,400 or so. It's like 86 leads or something. And 900 spent on ads and just over 22,500 in sales. $900 ad spend, 22,000 return, that's not bad, but we expect better. Yep, Monday morning, first thing we do here CMG, everyone gets their little marker, heads on up to the wall, writes on the TGIM wall what you're looking forward to this week. It just helps to be able to reset some focus for the week ahead. You know, what you don't want it to just end up being is a wall of scribbles. You need to stop and think about what am I actually looking forward to this week. Whether it's a new campaign you're working on, whether it's enhancing an old campaign, whether there's something exciting in the pipeline, that's coming up. So for me, um, today I wrote on the wall, this will be the week where I complete the new software that I've been tackling the last few weeks. So this will be, this is it by the end of this week. It's gonna be all said and done. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to having that monkey off my back, that's for sure. <laughs> We have this philosophy, understand your customer better than they know themselves. And what that requires is a lot of time, effort, energy up front to really, I guess you'd say, put on your CSI investigative hat and go and find out exactly what makes that customer tick, what makes them buy, what makes them go to the shopping cart, add something to it, and then disappear and not fulfill the order. Yeah, what roadblocks are presented to your customer every single day? You know, do they have children? Are they at work? Are they in a job they don't like? So it's really important to figure out when that person, especially from our perspective, because our job is to generate leads and sales for our customers, that's predominantly it, right? Put money in your bank, that's what we do. So we really need to figure out when is someone most likely to buy? Why are they most likely to buy at that time? So there's a number of factors, but really getting into the head of your customer, or you these guys, and you're talking to a personal trainer and you want them to come along to an event, they're giving up two days of their life. What are the three things, the three biggest things that a personal trainer is really looking for the most effective and easiest ways to generate new clients like i know about you but that sounds quite appealing and you almost want to like pilot it in a, in a specific order you know so it's for people about learning how to generate high quality leads so you've generated the lead then convert 90 percent of sales appointments so you could have that as the second one generate high quality leads using low cost marketing methods. See that though, can you see the words that I'm using like high quality, low cost? I mean it's it's on the path, like what you've what you've got there, like you know you've got the the making of it, yeah. but you can see by just changing a couple of words and giving a little bit of explanation to something, yeah, sure. it can it can make it better. Knowing where someone's at throughout their day can allow you to be able to enter the conversation that's currently going on in their mind. So if you're running targeted ads in the morning, you know, maybe you've got a targeted ad saying, you're in a rush to get to work. You know, really speaking to where someone is at in their journey is critical in the overall you know, ability to be able to generate a lead or a sale. This is like, what I find tricky is that there's so many different locations, right? And they're all- How many are currently running? Three. Three, yeah. right. So you just need to focus on three, Yeah. right? I'm just pulling you up on your so many, because there's not so many. 20 would be so many I could yeah. get that because what what we do is oh there's so many I'm just going to do the bare minimum needed just to tick it on to let it keep going yeah. and I'll go and focus on another campaign that's easier for my brain that's what we do yeah. and we need to bust that we need to know when we're doing that and go hold on a minute that I'm feeling a bit anxious about this right now why am I feeling that I'm feeling like that because there's so many okay well how could I how could I potentially eliminate that or how could I work through this I'm leading to a point oh. It's like the first one, just pick one. You pick one location. Closest to that. Yep, the one that's closest. Fine, there you go, there's a starting point. So you go f Brisbane, f Biggie and Bad Boy and everyone, right? Go to the first, most important, and start with that. That's it. It's imperative to make sure that we're using the right language, the right words, when we're communicating with each other. Um, I mean, I think that's just important as a human being. Uh, but what we like to instill here at CMG, part of our you know, culture, our philosophy, is to make sure that we're speaking with clear terms, you know, so we don't use loose language such as, a lot of them are doing this, not a lot. What does a lot mean? Your a lot might mean different to my a lot. So really getting clear and specific with the language. What it does as well on a different level is by you saying a lot, 
you're not actually really clear on the actual metric itself, right? And it allows your mind just to stray. And if you're having a bad day, a lot could seem like a fucking world's falling down on your shoulders. Where if you're having a great day, you can go oh, a lot, well, a lot's not that much. Right, so it can really change the way that you see something, view something. Um, and because we're in a results driven business, there's no room for that. There's no room for feelings. There's no room for the emotions to take over the actual core metric that we're looking at, which is actual factual results. Yeah. Emotion has no place in a Facebook ads account. It really doesn't. I mean, I, I've kept an ad running before because I spent a heap of time creating the ad and I was hoping it was gonna work. What a stupid thing to do. If it doesn't work, you get rid of it. You know, we can only look at the clear facts of what works. Because if you've spent two hours designing a beautiful image and we notice in the first two days it doesn't work, well, there's no point going, oh, but Tina spent two hours or 20 minutes on this image, we should give it another red hot go. You need to, you need to back it up with evidence. So I'll always challenge every single one of you, where's that coming from? I think another big problem with creators is that we get too emotionally attached to what we create. We put some time, effort, blood, sweat, tears, whatever you put into something, and there's this part of you, the, the part in your heart that just really wants it to work because you put so much love and effort. It's, it's just like the chef, right? The, the DIY chef, you know, they put all this, like I, I don't get it when I watch the shows. Oh, I mean, I get it, but I don't feel it. It's what I mean, like the Master Chef show where they're talking about, oh, this is made with love and there's so much love in this meal. I'm like, F I just want a meal to eat. But I, I understand the concept that it's because they've put so much time effort. It's like when Emily, like when she cooks, I can tell she cooks with love in it. Because as soon as I have my first mouthful, she's like, was it nice? What do you reckon? And she, yeah, she wants feedback because she's put her love into it, her time, her effort. With Facebook is us creators can fall in love with what we create and that's a big no, no. That's a big no, no. Don't fall in love with what you create. Fall in love with what you learn from what you create. And with imagery is super important as well. You've got the coconut packet there yeah. and you've got a strawberry here and a coconut there, yeah. right? And this is where you'll be able to speed up proficiency as well as you go, Let's test the strawberry here and the coconut there. Small thing, mm. but that coconut on the right, for some reason, might fucking totally outdo this one. Yeah. Okay. Right? So that's what we mean by testing a variable. And then you might go, shit, this one's the winner. Yay. Okay. So now, let's test this one with a green background instead of blue. So all of a sudden, you're not sitting there going, I've got to come up with, because there's three images. You do the main image creation and then you just change some variables on and go, here you go guys, here's four different images. Test them. You know, another philosophy we've adopted here at CMG is team training. Uh, we've been talking about a lot, you know, the ability to be able to upskill your team. And whilst we might take an hour out of the day for someone to be able to, you know, not have productive work time, we see that as an investment. You know, that one hour will become five, 10, 15 down the track. I think one of my biggest philosophies as a person is what am I willing to give up at the front to get at the back? Um, and I see this as just another component of that, another facet of that, being able to provide time for the team to know 100% that they're learning because it's not just a matter of, you know, go and learn. We recap, we go, what did you learn? How can that impact what you're working on? So it's instilling the learning as well. So it's not just go and read a book for an hour. Yay, this is amazing. You know, you need to actually come back and be accountable to what you've learned. So I often get asked, how long does it take to master Facebook advertising? And the reality is there's just no answer for it. But I can give you some parameters. All right. Does it take like a standard apprentice? Do you have to do your four years? Do you have to do your 10,000 hours? I think it's really comparative to results. You know, some people can pick things up really quick. So with my cabinet maker apprenticeship, I got signed off, you know, a year and a half early when technically you had to have four years in the trade for you to be able to be qualified. But the reality was is, you know, I challenged status quo. So if someone says to you, you're not a master at Facebook until you've done three years, ultimately all it really comes down to is what results have you got? What results have you got? How much ad spend have you had under your management? Because when you start, and not just ad spend of other people's money, this is where I think you really cut your teeth. How much money have you spent of your own dollars, your own dollars, not your marketing budget from the company, from your own back pocket. That's where you really start to learn because when you're putting your dollar out there on the line, you're gonna pay a lot of close attention to it. Trust me. If I was starting advertising with Facebook 
again, what I would do is pay more attention. When I started Facebook advertising, you know, I was spending thousands of dollars a day and I just knew I was making thousands of dollars a day from selling products. Didn't really have any parameters. I was really basing my success of an ad based off a of cost per click, which when you look at things today and the data today, just because something's got a low cost per click, it doesn't mean it's the best conversion. So number of variables, but if I, was, if I had my time again, I'd be paying more attention to the data. That's where the magic is. Sometimes I know going back, looking back at my old habits, killing campaigns because it wasn't getting a specific result. But if I go back and dig in and we call it mining for data, if we go back and mine for data, there's gonna be some valuable, some very valuable insights there that I could have learned from instead of go, oh, back to the drawing board, let's create a brand new campaign. And that's what a lot of advertisers do. They're not paying attention to the data. Part of our commitment here at CMG to become the number one digital marketing agency in Australia, first and foremost, Australasia, is to be able to make sure that we're bringing the latest, most up-to-date, innovative changes that are happening in the digital marketing space. So we have a show called Notified, which we're up to about episode eight now, so it's still very fresh, very new, where we just bring the, the, the current events, I guess you'd say. It's just like your standard news channel, but instead of talking about the demise of the world, we're trying to bring the changes in the, the social media world and how they affect your business, how they can affect your bottom dollar. And I get to give my context on it, you know, give, give my two cents worth. Should really call the show Notified Brett's Two Cents. So thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Notified. Get out there, get on those video message chats, get those YouTube live streaming. And until next time, you've be notified. Okay. So thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Notified. Get out there, get on those Facebook Messenger chats, add as many people as you can to it. Let's see what you can produce there. Get your YouTube live streaming working, and maybe you might even get yourself a few super chats. So until next time, I'm Brett Campbell, and you've been notified. And I've got two minutes to get on my next meeting. This is how we do it here. There's no, f I was going to say there's no fucking around. A little bit of fucking around, but not right at this second. I don't need my glasses. <sighs> Reset. Yeah, that's good. Good one. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, that's how it should be. Here's what you've got to think. What does the person reading this need to know, think and feel in order for them to want to trust that you guys are the experts, you know what you're talking about and that you understand them? Put yourself in the, the place of a relationship here, you, you're going through this life shit, you're looking for answers, you come across a page where, oh, these guys might understand me. Oh, I relate to this. The main point that we want you to walk away with is that you have some context to it. So like if I said one of the biggest mistakes about experts trying to create online products is they're not descriptive enough in their language well, they're not descriptive enough in the content they're producing. I could say that, but what does that mean? Now if I say language and persuasion are the most important pillars when trying to get someone to purchase your product or service. Using the wrong words in the wrong space at the wrong time can be cataclysmic to your blah blah blah. So all of a sudden they're going, oh shit, if I use the wrong words at the wrong time, oh my god, maybe, maybe I do need some extra help. So that's the point of it. Everyone's been hit by the organic bug. The ones who win are the ones who are gonna remain consistent because there'll be people who are like, oh, I'm getting no reach, I'm just gonna stop. Same thing that happened in 2012. But videos, videos is key. If you're putting a blog up on your website, here's the best way to get more viewers to it. Go live on your, fa on your phone. Hey guys, just posted a brand new blog post to the website where we talk about one of the most major factors that 95% of people get wrong when they're breaking up. That will literally cost you tens of thousands of dollars. I'm gonna put the link below in the comments for you to go and click it, to go and watch the video, or to go and read the article. Let us know what your favorite point was, um, and we'll see you on the next one. Bang, live, done, video up, link to the website. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you've seen anything in my content in the last probably three weeks, but there's been a massive emphasis and a push to multifaceted approach. It's not a matter now of having an ad and like most people just boost it. That's just not gonna stand out in the market anymore. There needs to be multiple different ads, there needs to be multiple different ad sets, there needs to be multiple different types of ads. So there's, there's so much that goes on and, and I totally get it. Um, you guys are trying to run a business and the unfortunate side of running business is, and well, the fortunate side for us though, is that, you know, without leads, you ain't got a f
business, right? You could have the best systems and tools and best trainers in the world, but if they're not getting leads, then they're gonna go somewhere else, right? So you spend a thousand, how many leads do you get in that month? Yeah, we're about 20. I wanna get super clear on what your guys' understanding of a lead means. What does a lead mean? Is it a name, an email, a phone number of someone? Is it someone who's filled out an expression of interest with a lot of detail? Is it someone who actually shows up? What's, what's your... If we were to go name, email, phone number, ideal scenario for you, what would you pay for a name, email, phone number? Like if I gave you 10 name, email, phone numbers, what are you willing to invest in that to acquire that? You tell me, you're the expert, what, are you, what, are, what can we get it for? Like I said to you, I've generated leads for 30 cents and I've generated leads for $300. It's all about what your lifetime value of a client is, right? So what we need to understand, and, and this is the biggest, I guess, conversation I generally have with most businesses is, really understanding the numbers. I see too many businesses not clear on how much they would spend to acquire a lead. Like it baffles me. People have this number in their head like, oh, it should cost a dollar or five dollars or fifty dollars, whatever it is per lead. But it's like, where do you get that number from? Oh, I heard someone else say that that's what it should cost, right? But the reality is you need to work out your actual, what's a custom actually worth to you? You know, I was talking to one of our clients today and we, one of the things that we do is we distinguish and uncover what would you, if I was to give you a customer right now, how much would you invest to, to have that customer? At the very least to break even, to cover all costs. For example, with, with this particular client, I wrote down, okay, let's look over the last month. Let's look at all the jobs that you've received and the value of that, the profit from each. In this case, we worked out and it was like, so this one, this job was 2000, this one was 1500, this was 300, this was 1200, 800, 3, 5, 7, 12, and just listed them all out. And then broke down, obviously, just basic mathematics, how much was generated divided by how many jobs. And we figured that the number was actually $850. Even though some of the jobs are like 300 and 400, but on average, it's 850. So I looked at it, I said, what other costs are occurred inside the 850? We worked it all out and we broke it down to about $750. $750 would break even. Everything paid, not making any money, but breaking even. So I said, if I was to give you 10 of those, right, which obviously that's not ideal, it's the you know the worst case scenario is for us to be breaking even really that's ultimately and then it, it just it sort of lit a light bulb in, in the person's head and it was like oh so i've been spending way too little on advertising you know expecting that i should be getting a lead for 50 dollars when it's like you can actually spend 750. so it just opens the floodgates opens the mind and opens the possibility to tap into a lot more clients that's the thing you guys might go brett i'm happy to spend 200 dollars for a lead because i know that we convert Every two leads that come in, we convert one. So it costs us $400, but we make six grand. That's how we scale. That's how I was able to you know, scale the f out of our franchise because I just knew the numbers and I was willing to be able to invest into the numbers. You know, I had, I had a client, she came to us, she's got an online e-commerce store. She sells shoes online. She was spending you know, 100 bucks a day and she was like, that's a lot you know, three grand a month. And we're like, look, you know, our goal is to obviously, you know, triple that as soon as possible. Look, within a week, we actually went back to her and I said, look, here's what we've spent. Here's the return on investment. What do you want to invest extra into it? She goes, just spend as much as you can. So it's comparative, right? But we've got to get there. We don't do it loosely. We don't just go, like, if you said to me, Brad, I've got 50 grand cash in the bank. I want to spend 20 grand a month on ads. Go and do it. I'd go, Great, our goal will be to get up to 20, but there's no way you can just start this campaign and go, there's 20 grand because we're not necessarily gonna get the best conversions that way. So it's a sliding scale. End of the week bro, it's Friday again. Another week down. Last week's vlog went off really well, getting some great feedback. I'm enjoying the transition of it actually. I'm personally enjoying the, the difference. It got to a point with the, the previous vlogs where it felt like we we're pushing to create content and I don't ever wanna feel like I'm pushing to do something. It, I want it to feel natural, I want it to come nice and easy. There's a good lesson in there is, you know, quantity doesn't mean quality. Right. It's all right. We can get better than that. It's for the vlog, that. We can get better than that, guys. 
Look, you know, $900 ad spend, 22,000 return, that's not bad, but we expect better. But no, that's fucking awesome, that's really good. So thank you so much for tuning in to this week's vlog. Hope you've enjoyed, as always, please leave a comment below, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do what you can. If you think that CMG can help you with your digital marketing needs, then be sure to give us a call at 1300GetCMG or click the link in this video somewhere, there'll be a link somewhere. Or you, you'll find me. If you're a smart cookie, you'll be able to find your way back to, to how to get a hold of us. Not the best call to action in a video, of course, but we'll put the number up there, we'll put a link up here. And uh, yeah, hopefully CMG can help you achieve the goals that your business needs to be achieving.